Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Adda Variety. My name is Kushbu and in this video we are going to look at one of the very very important topic inside this big data domain that is something called as Hadoop. So in this video we will be discussing about what is Hadoop and why it is gaining so much of popularity in today's world. Also we will be discussing about what are the components of Hadoop. So without wasting our time let's get started. In the earlier days when the world was not that digital at that time the data that was being generated was mostly in the form of documents. Documents means in the form of rows and columns. Fine. And that kind of data was very easy to store as well as process at the same time. So at that time a single storage unit plus processing unit was sufficient enough to store the data that was being generated means a single unit was sufficient enough to process as well as store that particular data but as the year passed when the internet took over the world the data that was being generated was not supposed to be stored in a single storage and processing unit the data was getting generated with the huge volume with a high velocity with a different different variety such as a structure semi structure and unstructured means the data that was being generated was not in the form of rows and columns it actually was in the form of audios videos picture text file etc and it was nearly impossible to store that huge amount of data with a high velocity and a different variety in a single storage and processing unit so there was a need of having multiple system which could store the data as well as process at the same time that's where hadoop came into a picture and that's where hadoop came into a picture in general hadoop have three components let's see what are that so the first component name is hdfs the second component is named as map reduce and the third and last component name is yarn so here we will discuss about each one of that component in very very detailed manner because this video is particularly to understand what is hadoop and how it stores and process the big data so let's discuss about this first one that is HDFS. HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File System. As the name suggests, it shows that it is used to store the files. Basically, this HDFS is meant for storing the data. Means this is a storage unit for big data, you can say. Just now we saw in this example to store the high volume of data single unit was not at all sufficient enough. That is why this HDFS provides the solution of storing that huge volume of the data by splitting that data into different different clusters or node using simple programming techniques. Suppose for an example if I have a 500 MB of data and I have to store this using this Hadoop distributed file system. So what it used to do inside this HDFS, first of all, it will split the data into different different blocks such as let's take this four blocks and I have to store this 500 MB of data. So inside HDFS, it first splits that particular data into different different blocks that is let's say this is block a let's say this is block b similarly this is block c and this is block d so this 500 mb of data will be stored like this 128 mb of each data will be stored across these clusters fine so 128 mb each will be stored in the block a block b and block c and after that whatever remaining amount of data that will be left once after storing this 128 mb of data in three block i am remaining with the 116 mb so this remaining amount of data will be stored in this last block so here the concept is that that data will be splitted into different different 
blocks and each block stores 128 MB of data. So each one of this block will be storing 128 MB of data and the last block if 128 MB of data will not be available. So remaining amount of data this block D is going to store here. So that's how HDFS works. Now once the data is stored now it's time to process that particular data. Let's understand this way. In the traditional world, what happens that to store the data and to process the data, one single unit was sufficient enough. But now as the volume of data increased, one single unit was not sufficient enough to process that data. And also it used to take so much of time to execute or to process that data. And it was not at all relevant in the real world. And that's where this Hadoop second component that is MapReduce came into a picture. So let's understand how MapReduce processes the data. So what MapReduce do is first it splits the data into different different nodes. Once after splitting the data into different different nodes, it used to process that data. So it will process the data present on each node and once after processing, it will sum all the data and will provide as a output. Means the data which has been given to this MapReduce for processing what it will do first it will split the data among different clusters or nodes and it will process that data individually once after processing it will combine that data and will provide as a output so that's how map reduce work now once the data is processed it needs to run on the hadoop cluster and for running on the hadoop cluster different resources is to be needed such as ram cpu and network bandwidth so these three things is needed for running the data on the hadoop cluster means at one time multiple jobs run on the hadoop cluster now for making this job run on the hadoop cluster a set of resources is required now there was a question that who will manage these resources and that's where this yarn that is third component of hadoop came into picture this yarn stands for yet another resource negotiator. So this yarn actually consists of four components. Let's understand that. The first one is resource manager. The second one is node manager. The third one is application master. And the last one is container. So these are four components of Yarn. This resource manager assigns the resources. This node manager actually handles the node and monitor the uses of resources that how much resources is used by which which cluster. After that, this application master is actually for requesting the resources from this node manager. And at last, this container contains the resources. So let's understand how MapReduce job is executed with the help of these components. Means how these components used to communicate entirely. At first, this node manager asks for the resources that is present inside the container to the application master. It asks for what? It asks for the resources that is present where? Inside this container once it provides or once it accepts the request for providing the resources it actually updates to the resource manager and also sends these resources to the resource manager so it works in this way so by this way yarn processes the job and manages the hadoop cluster I hope you understood what is Hadoop, what are the components of Hadoop that is HDFS, MapReduce and Yarn. How this component works for storage, processing and for resource allocating. So that's it for this video. If you would have learned something from this video, then please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Till then, keep learning and stay tuned for getting the more videos from this channel. Thank you so much.